Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. And today I wanna to show you how to install Laka on a USB drive. Now you can take this USB drive, plug it into any PC, boot from the USB drive, and you will have Laka running from the USB drive. You do not need to install this to a hard drive. You can run it directly from a USB drive. And it works pretty amazingly. I have tested it on two PCs now. One was a i7-2600 with a AMD R9-270X, and all the emulators ran at full speed. So I grabbed an older Windows laptop that I have. It has an older i3 processor with a 2500 Intel HD graphics built in, and it ran N64 at full speed. I have had no problems with it. So you'll be able to take this USB drive, bring it to your buddy's house, plug it into his computer, boot from the USB drive, and play your awesome retro games from there. There's a couple things we're going to need here. Let's get right into it. First thing you're going to need is the image. Now you can get that by going to www.laka.tv. Get, get Laka, Windows, PC. Now there's two versions, the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version. If your processor is older and does not support 64-bit, download the 32-bit. Next thing we're going to need is Win32 Disk Imager. This is going to allow us to flash the Laka image to a USB drive. So go ahead and download this. Very easy to download. No malware. It's been downloaded 78,000 times this week already. And the last thing I suggest you get is SD card formatter. Now what this will allow you to do is bring your USB drive back to stock capacity. After you flash the locket image, your USB drive will not show up as... It, let's say you have an 8 gigabyte, it'll only show up as about 250 megabytes after you flash it. If you ever wanted to take Laka off the USB drive and use the USB drive for something else. I suggest downloading SD card formatter. So I already have Laka for PC downloaded and I placed it in a folder on my desktop. It comes as a zipped WinRAR package so you may need to download WinRAR or 7-zip. Just right click, extract, and I extracted it to another folder inside of this. Now when we get to this, this is a disk image file. It's only 300 megabytes. So it's very small, it's easy to install. I am going to be flashing this to an eight gigabyte USB 2.0 stick. It's a slow stick, it's an older stick, but I just wanted to demonstrate that it works perfectly from a USB 2.0 stick. Open up your Win32 disk imager. And from here, you need to choose the correct device. So make sure the USB device that you are flashing to is listed here, minus drive G. I'm gonna click on the blue little folder here in Win32 Disk Imager. I will navigate to where I extracted the Laka for PC image. Just double click on that and write, yes. Now the USB drive needs to be formatted FAT32. You can do that using SD card formatter. If you have a USB device that's larger than 64 gig or 64 gigabytes or larger, you will need to download an application called FAT32 format and I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so it flashed to the USB drive successfully. So depending on the manufacturer of your computer, you are going to need to boot from the USB drive. Most, most manufacturers use the F12 key to get into the boot menu. So what you're gonna do is place your USB drive into the computer you wanna use, reboot the PC, press F12. It's either F12, F2, or delete on depending on the model of your computer. Now you can look this up online to find out what key gets you to the boot menu. 
you're going to want to boot from that USB dr drive and just select run live. And I'll show you how to do that now. Now, one of the other really cool things about Locket is you can just have Locket installed on one USB dr device and have your games on another USB device. And I'll show you how that works now. So I'm going to have to use my desktop to run this. Um, my laptop would not allow me to do HDMI out while I was using Laka, booting it from the USB drive. So I had to switch over to the desktop. Now this desktop is a Dell Optiplex 960. It's got an i7-2600 with a R9-270X 2GB XFX graphics card. Um, I know it's more powerful than the the laptop but at least you can see the um, you know the emulator running from USB stick so what I'm at here is the boot menu and I'm on the Dell and Acer it's F12 you may have to enable the boot menu BIOS but just click F12 some computers are delete some computers are F2 you just need to find out you can look online to see how to access your boot menu. Um, I'm just going to click on my USB storage device. And from here, we're going to run live. We don't want to install it unless you have a clean drive and you would like to install it. So it's going to resize the USB drive. And it'll reboot one time we will have to access the menu one more time and we can boot up Laka and start playing our favorite old school retro games. There you have it. There is Laka running from a USB stick. Now we just, this is only running, there's nothing installed on a hard drive. It's all running from an 8 gigabyte USB 2.0 stick. Now you can install ROMs over network from another computer, but what I am going to do is I already use a USB 3.0 60 disk ultra stick, and I have all of my ROMs loaded on it already. I have my PS3 controller connected with the sync cable, and all I got to do is press... Make sure your lights are flashing, plug it in, and now I am using the PS3 controller in the menu. If you go to scan directory, as you see here, my USB stick isn't listed yet. I haven't plugged it in. I'm going to plug it in now, and I might have to back out. There we go. 64 USB. And I'm just going to scan, let's say N64, new 64, because I had some that weren't working. So I'm going to scan this directory. You can see at the bottom there, we're scanning. While it's scanning, I'm just going to go back and make this look a little cooler. Menu. And I'll do retroactive. I will also turn on my frame rate so we can see the frames per second at the bottom there. We have our N64 games listed. I will scan again. I will scan. See if we can get 3DO working. Now I haven't tried this yet. No, I must not have them in the right format. And the PSX folder is going to take a little while. So we'll also SNES. While that's scanning, let's go ahead and start Legend of Zelda. I'm going to back out and turn my options 
GFX accuracy. Then we'll turn this to, well, we can't quite go to 1080p, but this should work. Close the game just to enable the settings I just did. And we'll run it now. If you notice, the everything will look really clean. What I'm going to do is just get into the game. I'm going to fast forward this beginning here for you guys. And I'll get right into this game. Okay, so... Ooh, I have fast forward still on. Hopefully I just turned it off. There we are. Steady 60 frames per second. I mean, that's no surprise with the system. This is not a Raspberry Pi here. I know it's an older i7 CPU, but it still holds up. It's pretty good. Also have 16 gigs of RAM in this computer. I actually bought this for $90 on Craigslist. Um, this is what I record most of my gameplay on using an Elgato HD60. But you can see here that the game runs great and it is beautiful. Oh, little dude's in my way. We'll exit out of here. I will try, of course, Bloody Roar is going to run amazingly. Um, we'll try, I need to scan my other directory so we can Super Smash Brothers. And we'll see if this is still set with the same settings I used before, and it is. But running this from a USB stick is a really cool option if you just want to bring over your USB stick to a friend's house, plug it into their computer, boot from the USB, and play some really cool games. Like I mentioned earlier, taking this sucker to Best Buy and testing out a PC you want to buy. It's got lower specs and a cheaper, you know, a cheaper price tag. You can test to see if the emulators run good on them. Now where a lot of these, you know, the emulator fails on the Raspberry Pi and Android is when we get to the next level with all the Yoshis on screen. We're going to see if the PC can handle it. I got a feeling we should have no problem. Come on, get out of here, Link. There we are. Oh, <laughs> wow. Another thing I was actually saving up for is I want to buy a system on chip AMD motherboard 
It has the CPU built in. They have them on Newegg. And they're only about 60 bucks. I've just been kind of putting it off. Um, one of them runs a quad-core A6 5200. And I would like to get one of those to just build a little dedicated emulator PC. If it doesn't handle it, oh well. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to handle it though. And now that I have this, instead of setting up hyperspin, this would be a really good option. Now it's not as flashy as hyperspin, but I really like the look of this. And the flashiness to me is just overwhelming. I really like a simple look. As long as the games perform well, I don't mind what the menu looks like. Even the old retro arch was fine with me. Oh! So we'll back out of here. We'll just try Conker's Bad Fur Day. Okay, finally skipped that long intro there. And we are at 42 frames. I can go back out of here and turn the resolution, the accuracy and the resolution down. And we're back to 27 frames. Now this is a this game here is actually hardcore to uh, run on a lot of emulators. I'm not sure why if it was the optimization of the game itself, but it runs pretty bad on most systems. That's it, guys. That's the Laka Retro Arch emulator running from a USB drive. Now you can do this on any PC. Performance will vary with your CPU and GPU combination, but for the most part, you should get decent performance out of, let's say, a 2.8 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, even, and a 8400 GS. Old school stuff. You can actually pick up one of those systems on your local Craigslist or your local Trade It for $45, $20 to $40. Appreciate you guys watching. If you need any help, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below or send me a private message by going to my channel page. Click about and send message. Like always, thanks for watching.